Good evening and welcome to tonight's Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. This is part two of the Dixon and Caddo series. The girls game already in the books. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. In the meantime, we are getting ready for our first game, or excuse me, our boys game tonight. I want to say thanks again to all of our sponsors. By the way, those sponsors include Firehouse Subs. I think we have all the logos up there at once. Firehouse Subs bring our first quarter to you tonight. And we'll try to get all of the names and numbers to you in just a moment. I think that there are some numbers that are different than the roster that we had. So uh, if you're watching and you're a Dixon Comet fan, well, I am glad you're watching tonight. Three points on the board quickly for Haven Nesbitt and Cato on the board first. If the names are wrong, I apologize. We have what we have. And I believe that's John Vasquez with the ball, wearing number 13. Comet's starting lineup looks like this. Also, number, wearing number 12, Jay-Z Barnett. Number one is Jager Porter with the ball right now. Number 10, Mark Mayer. And number 11, Mason Apollo. Your starters for the Comets tonight. Tip away and steal by the Bruins. D.J. Dill, and the freshman off the steal goes hard to the basket. Off the glass on the left side, he has two. It's a five-point advantage. See pressure now, a little man pressure for Mcato in the early going here. A senior wearing number three, Jerry Hayslip. We mentioned junior number 14, Haven Nesbitt. The senior, number 15, Chandler Lackey. The freshman, number 23, D.J. Dill. And a junior, number 55, Colton Neptune. Thanks to everyone watching tonight, and if you are watching this live, we hope that you're getting the signal. Never fear, however, if it is not a strong signal, this game will be uploaded to the Midwest Sportsnet YouTube channel immediately following these games tonight. The girls game already in the books. Caddo coming away with the win, the number eight team in Class A with the victory. Three-pointer taken a little bit too strong. Dill chases it down, gets it off to his teammate Lackey, and Lackey stepped out of bounds. Vasquez will inbound, and there's the man defense. Bruins are going to pick up a man length of the court, it looks like, owning a five-point advantage here, and we have contact away from the ball. That'll be Mayer picking up the foul, his first personal. Equipment timeout as he'll take a little opportunity to tie his shoe. Our clock cam has been hit a number of times over the course of the girls' game, so looks like the wonky donkey there. Sorry about that. We'll keep you posted. Again, Firehouse Subs here, our first quarter sponsor of tonight's broadcast. 2501 West Main in Durant passes into Neptune, has a tough time controlling it, and ultimately does not, and will have a foul after the uh, Bennett. Takeaway, bringing it down the court. That's a second foul charge to Cato here, and both fouls picked up by Haven Nesbitt. Bruins in the man-to-man -man now. Bruins 3-0 and on the season. And there's a five-second call. Good job by Neptune to just stay home there on that right elbow. Draws the five-second defensive call, and it's a turnover. So Cato gets this one back. Dixon 0-1 on the year. Dill outside. Took one move too many. Dixon, we mentioned... 0-1, 53-49 loss to Springer. Caddo, by the way, number 11 in Class A. 
And the Bruins, after the steal, Neptune, a long pass down the court. And gets a nice job by Lackey to allow the defender to go up and coming down a little bit too strong. That's going to be Porter. And they're going to call that an intentional foul. He came down a little too strong. Coach doesn't like it. Wants to talk this one over. And I think that they're just saying the, the way he came down with those arms, it, is, it was an intentional foul. So it's going to be two free throws here. Would have gotten two anyway, but everyone's going to back away. And Lackey, that free throw is nowhere near where he wanted it to be. A little smile after the fact, and he misses them both. Cat is going to keep it on this end, though, after the hard foul, that intentional foul, so the Bruins will inbound under their own basket. 5 nothing the score here. Bruins number 11 in Class A. A win over Ashley to open the season, 51-34. And turn it right back over. Another foul the other way. Caddo's third foul, and Neptune picks that one up his first. Rock Creek 52-38. And that one tipped on the web. Dill got a hand on that one, but it went in and off the glass anyway. So Porter has the first two of the night for Dixon. Neptune alone, stopped and allowed the defender to come in. So Vasquez will pick up that foul. Neptune will go to the line to shoot two. Cato also with a big win over Healton, 64-28. Scored at least 50 points in each of those first three games, not allowed the team to get past 38. 36-point win in the last outing, that over Class 2A Healton playing Class 4A Dixon tonight. And Neptune misses the third consecutive free throw for the Bruins here. Nesbitt will take a seat now as Jaden Self checks in. Self a senior. Second free throw falls. And a steal by Dill, leans in, draws the foul. The ref says that one was on the court. Drew the foul's going to stay on Caddo's end. And that's the fourth foul against Dixon. That one charged to Porter. And for Porter, it's his second personal foul. So those are starting to add up quickly. We may have to see what both of these teams' benches looks like. look like. Neptune was tied up. This one's going to go to Dixon. 6-2 the score. Porter with the only basket of the night so far for Dixon, nearing the midpoint here in the first quarter. Press broken pretty easily. And then a turnover. Well, turnovers were... Really the issue for the Comets in the girls game. Bruins look inside, Dill, that one's blocked. Nice job by Vasquez to get up there, but it's a turnover, it will go the other way. Dill, we get another opportunity, stops this time. He travels and he saw Vasquez there. I think he heard the footsteps. Coach Johnson will take a timeout. We'll keep it right here. 6-2 is our score. And I think Dill heard the footsteps from Vasquez that time, and he turns it over. So 6-2 is our score. Nesbitt with three points tonight. DJ Dill with two. Neptune with the basket. Shout out to Brian. Thanks for watching tonight. A uh, number of folks watching tonight. Appreciate all of you, whether you're watching this live or the replay on the Midwest Sports Net YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. We would appreciate that. Helps the channel a lot. And, Brian, it doesn't matter how far away you are watching this game. We appreciate you watching. I want to say thanks to Firehouse Subs and all of our sponsors, which include k d Customs, Gallipot Pharmacy, and Pro Image.
Vasquez didn't want to throw that one in. Apollo will. Comets get another opportunity. Here's the full court pressure. Length of the court now. Apollo with one move, drives right side, no good. Rebound down low, tipped around. Dill comes away with it. Behind his back, looking ahead, he'll slow it down. And the Bruins will reset now. Neptune looking down low, nice look ahead. Shot's going to fall, count the basket for Chandler Lackey. He'll go to the line to get the and one opportunity. Lackey has his first two. Substitutions now as Austin Thompson checks in for the Bruins, as well as Jacob Jenkins, both juniors. Free throw a little strong. Tipped out. It's going to stay with Caddo. Like he's going to think about some of these free throws when tonight's over with. He's now 0 for 3 from the line. Dill with a hand in his face, tries the three, stays on the Caddo in. Nice job chasing down the board. Lackey's there. Making up with it for the offensive board. Doesn't happen from the free throw line. Three-pointer. A little too strong. Rebound down low. Off the glass and in. Jenkins comes off the bench. Gets two points quickly. It's 10-2. That one tipped around, last touched by Caddo. Substitutions now for the Comets. Tanner Stewart checking in, as well as Christian Cotton. High pass into Stewart. He can reel that one in. Cotton, excuse me, Stewart, six foot three. And I'll tell you what, we're going to check one more time, Dixon fans, if you're watching this. Well, thank you very much. Glad you're watching tonight, Andy. If you're watching this, we're going to check and recheck names. We always do this before the contest, and we're still not satisfied even after one check here. Deal with a long-range three. We're going to go with the names that we have, and we'll just stick it out from there. Timeout on the court. Bruins on top 10-2. Thanks for watching tonight, Andy. Remember that this game is on Midwest Sportsnet YouTube channel as well. So please do subscribe. Teresa, thanks for watching tonight. Big shout-out to Firehouse Subs, by the way. They're at 2501 West Main in Durant. Talking the girls' game, I'm a big fan of the Italian. That's my favorite. You, if you haven't yet been there, relatively new business in Durant. Not too new, about three years old. Relatively new. You'd stop by 2501 West Main there at Suite 104A. They're just on the south side of the road there off Main Street slash Highway 70. Quinn, by the way, is hiring at Firehouse Subs, just in case. This may be something somebody needs to hear. Holiday season, maybe it's your time. Need to check by there, stop by, makes a little extra money. Another steal, push off underneath. That's going to result in two shots for Chandler Lackey, and Lackey with another steal. You know, I'd say 0 for 3 from the free throw line and we'll let him have a couple more opportunities here. But he really is taking care of business everywhere else. He's on the glass. He's on the court getting steals, taking care, and getting his job done. A 
Apollo checking back in now for the Comets. And Lackey finally gets a free throw to fall. He now has three points. Stewart with the long pass. Looking down low, in and out of the hands of Mayer. Cato gets it back. Thompson's going to try the three. Top of the key counted. Austin Thompson for three. As a team high three points along with Haven Nesbitt and Chandler Lackey. Lots of contact. Ball comes away loose. Jenkins is going to keep it. Had a man ahead. That's all right. Probably the, the best move was to keep it himself. He did that, and the junior has two more points. And Cato's lead has extended here as the first quarter has trudged along. It's a, a slower first quarter than you might imagine. 16-2. Dixon with seven fouls here in the first quarter. Coach Eubank really talking this one over with his team here. And you may have heard him there. He's talking about the fact that Cato wants to run the ball. He's imploring his team to slow it down just a little bit. Of course, at this point, shortening the game is of benefit to the Bruins. The team like Cato that would want to run and gun, slow it down, get the Bruins out of their rhythm. Back in action now. There's full court man pressure. Now to the Comets credit, they're slowing it down on the offensive end. Cato starting to step up the intensity here. Thompson. There's the open man. Jenkins steps in. Nice steal. Thompson looks ahead. Self. He's going to keep it. Left side. Off the glass. Won't fall. Tipped around. And Hayslip will keep it on the Bruins' end. Looking down low. Nice look from Hayslip to Jenkins. What a pass. Jacob now has six. So the Comet slowed it down some. I want to keep that slow pace, but... You have to look ahead and find somebody looking to the corner. Apollo from the left corner for three, too strong. Hayslip ahead. With numbers now, Hayslip almost a look away pass there. I think he, I think he confused Thompson just a bit. Pass a little bit too strong. And last touched by the Comets. Neptune cuts through. So we move the ball around outside. 40 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. No one to find. There's Neptune. Kicks out. Jenkins for three. Hey, slip. They'll get him over the back. Mayor had position on the left block. I believe Mrs. Cookie is watching us from Caddo tonight. Did I get that right? Pass to the Caddo bench. And it is possible if you are watching Facebook Live or losing the signal, don't worry about that. This game is going to be aired on the Midwest Sportsnet channel. Hayslip for two in the lane. Jerry 
Gives his team 20 points here in the first quarter. Pass to Jenkins. Touch pass. Won't fly. Jenkins, long range off the glass. No good. And Cato, with eight minutes in the books, is up by 18. We're going to take a break then. Be back in a moment. This is the BCP Spotlight Game. And the first quarter presented by Firehouse Subs. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh, my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. Well, as it was in the first game tonight, it was all Caddo in the first quarter as the Bruins are on top by 18 over Class 4A Dixon, the number 11 team in Class A tonight, running away here at home. Thanks for watching this BCP Spotlight game on Midwest Sports Net. Looking inside, nice job by Neptune finding the open Lackey, and Lackey now has five. Pressure broken by the Comets. Dill with a block at the free throw line. And we have a double dribble following that, so Comets just can't seem to get anything to go right on the court now for Dixon here in the second quarter. It's Zapala as well as Vasquez. Mayer. Bennett, and check there, Porter. Starting five out there on the court for the Comets. Dill, Lackey, Neptune, Hayslip, and Nesbitt. Then Neptune travel. 20 points the advantage for the Bruins here. Foul, that'll be on the way to the basket. They're going to give him two shots for this. Another possible little bit of continuation there as it stands. Porter will go to the line to shoot two. You look ahead for Caddo, by the way, and I realize we're in the second quarter looking ahead. First free throw, no good. But have Savannah on Thursday night and then the Savannah tournament. And then the semester break. Come back with Colgate and Rock Creek as that one goes in for Porter. He has all three points for Dixon. Neptune to Hayslip. Delay off the glass and in. Jerry Hayslip has four. And Hayslip has the steal. Ultimately comes away with it. It's going to stay on Caddo's end. Hayslip in the corner, gets around a defender, and he was fouled in the corner. That'll send him the line to shoot a one and one. So Hayslip with his first free throw opportunities tonight. At Boswell, at Colgate, at Rock Creek to open the new year for Caddo if all those games get to be played. And Colbert, and of course the Bryan County Tournament. Now Colbert is here, and then the Bryan County Tournament starting January 18th. Bryan County Patriot will be working in conjunction with Mix 96-1 to bring you the Bryan County Tournament this year. Excited about the opportunity, a little collaboration going on. Shout out to Mix 96 while we're at it. Hayslip makes the first.
second won't fall. And the Comets will get the board. And the Comets will have an opportunity. Will they have an opportunity to shoot free throws? That one's on the court. It's a one and one opportunity now. Paul will go to the line. Our second quarter presented by Pro Image in Durant. On North Washington. Business started by Daryl and Melissa Holiday here in 2020. I'll tell you what, they have some of the best collectibles, not only around, but I'm talking about you want to go Dallas, you want to go Oklahoma City, uh, you want to go one way or the other, you're not going to find anything any better. They also have, from Bryan County, Durant and Caddo football helmets. That's right. I mean, they have the, the, the mini helmets for your college teams, your professional teams. They also have Durant and Caddo football helmets. Those are incredibly cool. You can stop by and check them out. Baseline violation there and just another turnover for Dixon. Story of the night so far for both teams. Neptune was who Dill was looking for. Knocked away by Bennett. And Bennett in the corner. Going to think better of the shot. Now driving in. Really had nowhere to go with that one. Got up in the air and the passing opportunities went away. No numbers now for Cato as they take it the other direction up 21. Neptune down low. Off the glass and in. That's a tough guard from there. Colton Neptune now with his first field goal. Hey, slip. Little shove there, just trying to find position. And the first free throw is good. Mayor down two for three from the line. Gets another opportunity. Both teams in the bonus. Second free throw, no good. Tipped around. Mayor trying to get the board. Eventually can't do it. And Dill will stop. And Hayslip driving top of the key. Can't find the basket. Taking it all the way the other direction is Porter, and Porter will go to the line to shoot, too. Dixon, meanwhile, has a date with another Bryan County team coming up. A week from tonight, will host Silo. And that'll be the last game of the first semester for Dixon. Playing another ranked team from Bryan County. Silo currently ranked number 18 in Class 2A. And then the Comets won't play again until January 12th as Porter gets a free throw to fall. Substitutions coming in. We'll get those to you in just a moment. Sulphur, Comanche, Medill, Bing, four straight games to open January, all at home before the Comets travel to Antlers. And that's in January 29th. So Porter with another free throw. And... Dixon is trying to stay in this one. Back to within 20 points. Bruins in the contest now. Jordan Hawley as well as Peyton Bearden in the contest. Jacob Jenkins, Austin Thompson, and Jaden Sell. Coach Eubank getting this inbound set. Dixon needing to have something positive happen. That would count. Mark Mayer with two. His first field goal of the day. 
Dixon now with seven points here in the second quarter. Five points better than their first quarter outing. Back to within 18. Well, what Dixon was talking about doing from the bench was slowing things down just a little bit, and it does appear that way here in the second quarter. Nice ball movement by the Bruins, though. Not in a hurry. Thompson tries the three. That one's a little off the mark. And it will stay with the Bruins. Two Comets there to bring that one down. And neither Vasquez nor Mayer was able to do it. Jenkins with one dribble thinks better of the three. And a skip pass may find an opening here. Not this time. Turnover, Caddo. And the Comets get this one back. Nice winter night here. Well, not quite winter yet. Night late fall, late fall night as Comets will take a quick time out here at the midpoint in the second quarter. I want to say thanks to the folks at Pro Image, Daryl and Melissa Holiday, And they do a fantastic job. I mentioned that. 1205 North Washington in Durant. And I collect sports things. I've been collecting sports things for a long, long time. Lately, I've been getting pennants to put up in the broadcast studio. Well, you can get pennants at Pro Image. I even have a Coastal Carolina pennant. I know. You've been following the NCAA Coastal Carolina. Big win over BYU this weekend. They're that team that's out of nowhere that's still undefeated. I think they're 10 and 0. Yeah, they're 10 and 0. I got a Coastal Carolina pennant, and you know where I got it? I got it at Pro Image. Special order, got it taken care of. They can do special orders. Need to stop by and visit Daryl and Melissa. Tell them Joey sent you. Apollo with a long range three, and it's good. Well, chalk that up is just what the doctor ordered for the Comets. Back to within 15, Apollo's first basket of the night. And it is 27-12. Second unit needs to make something happen for Caddo, and the shot's too strong from Thompson. And so the Comets with another opportunity now to cut into the deficit. Dixon 4A this year. Have been for a little while in that classification. From Carter County. Just on the east side of Ardmore as Jenkins takes it from coast to coast. And it had been a little bit of a scoring drought for Caddo. No longer Jenkins leading the way for the Bruins now with eight points. Got a hand on that ball. Flew past him and self comes away. Going to keep it. Apollo playing pretty closely. Jenkins double teamed up and over defenders. Shot won't fall though. Tipped around. Bennett. Really know where to go with this one. He'll slow it down. Here's the double team. There's got to be a comet open, and there is. It's Mayer hit the underside of the rim. So the comets have gotten back to within 15. Now it's a 17 point deficit. Cata will slow it down, and substitutions getting ready to come back in for the Bruins as the Starters got a breather. Looks like they needed it. Call this one over the back. Jordan Hall will pick up the foul. Tenth team foul now against Caddo, and this will result in two free throws for the Comets. Subs will be coming in here in just a moment. Seven substitutions coming in, combined from both benches. And the official ball, by the way, just in case you're wondering where the ball is, there's the ball just past the backboard. You can see it resting, and we got another official ball coming out now. They lost the first one, so it's back there on that little roof. There's a coach's office behind the backboard, and so now we'll see the free throws ready to be shot. Mm 
Mayer misses the first. Mark Mayer two for five from the free throw line tonight. Here come all those substitutions. Let's talk about them. Why not? For the Comets, we have number three, whose number was not on the roster that we had. We'll check that. As well as number 35, Christian Cotton, who's been in the game already. Number 33, Tanner Stewart. So eight substitutes coming in from that stop and play. And for the Bruins, Lackey, Nesbitt, Hayslip, Dill, and Neptune. Starters check back in. Neptune looking for Lackey and put the ball on the court, actually put it on his foot, lost it, but then traveling will give it right back. Two three zone for the Comets. Long rebound, Nesbitt will corral it. Lackey underneath, kicks outside, Dill coming through. One defender goes past and Dill goes to the basket. And they're gonna say he traveled. So number three comes in with jewelry that has to be taken off. He's gonna have to tuck his shirt in and he will uh, he'll stay in. Meanwhile, Dill called for the traveling violation. Doesn't matter. Caddo gets the steal and gets it back. Dill with another steal. Hayslip, baseline, wraparound pass taken away. Ball is tied up. It's going to stay on Caddo's end. Well, Coach Johnson will have a few things at least to talk about at the intermission. Granted, the lead is expanded from 18 to 20. He's not going to wait for the intermission. Coach Colby Johnson takes the time out, and he's going to talk about this with his team off the bench. Dixon, opportunity to sort things out a little bit too. Caddo extends its lead from 18 to 20. But there's been a little bit of sloppy play here in the second quarter. Thanks to all of our sponsors for bringing us tonight's BCP Spotlight game, which include, of course, Pro Image, our sponsor here in the second quarter, K&D Customs, Firehouse Subs, and Gallipot Pharmacy. Thanks to everyone for watching tonight, live and on the replay. PCP Spotlight game. We'll be back in action next week. It'll be another Tuesday broadcast. Final cutter off the inbound play was Lackey. Nowhere to go with it. Kicks it back out. Hayslip, the high post is Neptune. Lackey running the baseline. He'll extend it, kicks back in. Neptune inside. Neptune, there's contact. Couldn't get the shot to fall. Tie ball, and this time it's going to go to Caddo. Excuse me, to Dixon. Porter. Lots of momentum off the inbound and loses control of the ball. Caddo gets it back. Nesbitt ahead of the pack. He's fouled. Fifty-nine seconds remaining here in the second quarter. It's been all Caddo, but the game's had a slow pace to it. It really has. Rebound off the one-and-one one opportunity to Hayslip. Nesbitt missed his free throw opportunity. Hayslip gets the board and puts it back in.
Porter goes into Neptune and no whistle. Now we'll get a whistle as the rebound to Caddo and Cotton will pick up the foul. And I think this should be this should be a two shot foul here. as well as a technical. So Porter will pick up a technical foul. And they're going to let Lackey attempt the free throw here. He's had as much opportunity to practice at the free throw line as anyone tonight. And I, you know what? I, I can almost guarantee you, and I will guarantee you, he will not be the one to attempt the technical free throws. Dill will come to the line to attempt those. First free throw for Dill is good. DJ Dill. And for Porter, that's going to be foul number four with the technical included. Dill now with a pair of free throws made. And the ball will stay with Cato when all is said and done. Just a sequence of events for Dixon that the Comets just really couldn't afford to have to stay in striking distance before the intermission. Not sure exactly what's taking so long here to get the inbound. But it stays with Caddo. Nesbitt now well outside the arc. Nesbitt high post, excuse me, that's Lackey going high post. Now the cutter is Dill. Neptune on the baseline. And coach was asking him to step up. Get off the baseline, step up a little bit. Nesbitt, 15 seconds left. Clock winding down here in the first half. Nesbitt, wraparound pass. Neptune draws two defenders, and he'll go to the free throw line. It's going to be a foul. Depending on who picks up the foul, it's going to be Cotton that picks it up. And Neptune, as Cotton picks up his second personal foul, Neptune We'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, I don't think this is the first half that either coach is necessarily going to be particularly pleased with for Coach Johnson. Has to be happy with the 25-point lead currently. Sorry, Neptune fans, I don't think I jinxed him. Ball last touched by Cattle. Stay on Dixon's end with 2.6 remaining. A 25-point lead currently heading into the break. But there's a lot for both teams to talk about. Pro Image, our second quarter sponsor. Want to say thank you to them. The inbound, Apollo with time. Tries the three. No good. It's going to come up short. I think that Nesbitt may have gotten a finger on that. As it stands, we'll go to the break with Cato on top by 25. I want to say thanks also to KD Customs as well as Gallipot Pharmacy and Firehouse Subs. Pro Image as well. Go by and see Daryl and Melissa Holiday. We're going to take a break and uh, we'll be back here. We'll take, well, we'll take the intermission. How about that? All right. Back in a moment with the VCP Spotlight Game on Midwest Sports Net. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. <laughs> I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh, my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today.
We are back here in Cano. Thanks for watching tonight. Appreciate everyone being a part of this Bryan County Patriots spotlight game here on Midwest Sports Net. It is the second half that is upon us, and we'll see what kind of adjustments both these teams made. We'll give you some unofficial numbers from the first half here in just a moment. Cato on top by 25. I'm Joey McWilliams. I want to say thanks to Joseph McWilliams on camera tonight. Appreciate him. And Lackey, I believe, intended a pass to Nesbitt down low. Went a little high. It's probably an understatement. Starting five on the court now for Cato, and we've rechecked and rechecked a couple of numbers and names. We'll get those to you for Dixon here in just a moment. And it looks like that is Tanner Stewart wearing number three. So all you Dixon fans, want to give a shout-out then to Tanner. Foul against Neptune, and so that's going to keep the ball on the Dixon end of the court. It's going to be Mayer as well as Stewart. Apollo Vasquez, who's inbounding. Apollo with the long three. And Bennett in the contest for Dixon. Starting five out there for Caddo and Dill, Neptune, Hayslip, Nesbitt, and Lackey. Comments in a zone look. Nesbitt well outside the arc, drains the three. Haven Nesbitt with two three-pointers tonight. He has six points. Cato on top by 28 now, the number 11 team in Class A. Looking pretty strong tonight over a 4A appoint, opponent. Shot no good, tipped around. Dill with the board and heaves that one down with his left hand. Neptune there, fires it. Nesbitt gives it off to Hayslip. That's a nice look by... Neptune, an even better look by Nesbitt to find the cutter in Hayslip. Jerry Hayslip now with nine points tonight, and that was teamwork all the way around. Neptune, the near steal, and instead he puts Mayer on the court. For Colton Neptune, that's foul number three. And that's the first player that you could say is in really any kind of foul trouble for Caddo. Jagger Porter on the bench with four fouls for Dixon. And someone's going to pick up another one for the Comets. That'll be Mayer. Mark Mayer now picking up the foul. And for the Comets, the first team foul, his third. The crowd has been about a middle-of-the-road crowd over the course of the evening tonight with the Bruins well in control of this one, now up by 30. So the crowd heading back home on this December 8th. And Bennett likely traveled. Officials let him go. Apollo with a long three-pointer that came up about two feet short and... Coach Eubanks just going to call a timeout right now. Nothing going right for the Dixon Comets. And that will give us an opportunity then to go ahead and make this little adjustment on our board. Third quarter presented by Gallipot Pharmacy. Gallipot Pharmacy in Calera. Josiah Schomer, the pharmacist there. It's an independent pharmacy, and they are located on East Main Street just across the tracks in Calera. And they can take care of all your pharmaceutical needs. Go ahead and take your prescription to Josiah Schomer and the folks at Gallipot Pharmacy today. Check them out. By the way, Josiah Schomer played ball up here at Caddo. Caddo Bruin fan. Also a supporter of Clara Bulldog basketball. And we've got some games on the Bulldogs home court coming up. Appreciate Josiah and all the folks at Gallipot Pharmacy. Near steal 
on the court that time by Stewart. And Stewart hit his head on the court as well after the fact. So they're going to check him out really quickly. If there's anything that's a uh, positive to the courts nowadays, the courts have these subfloors. Not as solid as the, uh, the courts used to be. I mean, it's a solid court, but there's just a little bit more give with this subfloor as opposed to whether it be concrete or the, uh, the parquets directly on the concrete or, in fact, the hard rubber floor. And I can attest to the fact that the Dixon Comet Gymnasium, the at least what some people know as the old gym, had the parquet, little parquet wood on the cement. That was a hard floor. This has a little bit more give, although it's just good to see Stewart stand up and walk this off. He may feel that for a little while. Checking into the contest now, Johnny Smith, wearing number 25 for the Comets. Comets going back to the zone, trying to slow things down. It does give a lot of leeway outside the arc. And Dill take advantage, just steps inside, about a 17-and-a-half-foot jumper there just inside the top of the key. And D.J. Dill now with 10 points on the night, leading all scorers. First score in double figures, takes look with nine tonight. Jacob Jenkins has eight for the Bruins. And the pass to Smith, who's come into the contest, the cutter through the lane. And Johnny Smith has his first two tonight. And three and a half minutes into the second half, that's the first basket for Dixon and Neptune. They're going to call that for the offensive foul. Gave a little bit of a push off with that left elbow, clearing some space in the lane. And Colton Neptune now will take a seat, among others. We have a line shift going on. By the way, for Neptune, it's his fourth, fourth personal foul, so... Likely would have taken a seat anyway. Stop and jumper in the lane by Mayer. Mark Mayer now with six points tonight. Steal by Apollo and quickly... Goes away out of bounds. Talked about the crowd here tonight. Nice crowd from Dixon making the trip into Bryan County. Crowd for Caddo has, I believe they, many of them have seen this movie before. They know the likely end with the Bruins up 28 here at home in the third quarter. We'll get Thompson with the foul. And for Austin Thompson, the junior has picked up his first personal. Bennett's shot's a little bit short. So here come the Bruins. The dribble penetration and kicking it back out. No hurry now for Cato. Holly takes the three. Self is there for the board. Coach Johnson content to run the play all over again. Thompson, jumper in the lane, and Self nearly with a second offensive rebound in that possession. (laughs) 
Mayer looking for Apollo, and it's tipped out. It's going to stay with Dixon. Mayer with six points tonight. Porter on the bench with four and four fouls, including a technical. Apollo with three. Johnny Smith has two as well. Five players for a moment outside the arc for the Bruins. There's a cutter, and it's a play for a coach like Colby Johnson to give the second unit opportunity to play, move the ball around, playing against some folks in a different color jersey. And now Self for three. Almost got his own rebound that time. Thompson, turnaround jumper, that one rolls out. Comments with the board. And realistically for both these coaches, a long first half, you almost have to think shortening the game at this point is beneficial to both teams. Caddo, as we mentioned, has a game on Thursday night against Savannah, and they will be a part of the Savannah tournament the next week heading into the intermission. Want everyone to be healthy going into that tournament. See if you can get at least four more games out of this part of the, of the uh, schedule. Hayslip gets ahead. Looked like he might have taken one extra step. Comes away with the basket anyway. Jerry Hayslip now with 11 points. For Dixon, nothing going right. Foul at the midcourt line. You shorten the ball game, you get out of dodge, you get all the players back together, sort things out before you take on Silo. And again, another ranked Bryan County team. On the schedule for, my goodness, Jerry Hayslip leapt up in the air, grabbed the ball out of the air, dished off to Dill, play of the night. Jerry Hayslip with the steal and the assist, DJ Dill with two. Wow. Turnaround jumper won't fall, but Bennett will go to the line to shoot two. Definitely the play of the night. And that's just solid defense. Hayslip, the senior, with 11 points tonight. Steal and assist all in one play there. Bruins sending in a freshman in J.T. Talley, number 33. And a senior, number 10, Carson Culbreth. Free throw good for Bennett. It's a 31-point game right now. And Hayslip with the baseline. He's fouled as he goes up. Comments have sent in, by the way, Josh Palisano, wearing number zero. Johnny Smith back in the game. And Callan Rowe. I believe I misattributed his name being Tanner Stewart, Stewart earlier, Callan Rowe wearing number 33. This gets the first, misses the second. Thompson for three in the left corner. A little too strong. Long rebound, though, taken by Palisano. Comets with one more opportunity here in the third quarter. And Bennett can't make it fall. Nice move. Hayslip looks ahead. Pass too strong. Dill with a time. Off the glass. No good. Eight minutes remain here 
And the Bruins extend the lead. It's now 32 points. Caddo on top. I want to say thanks to Gallipot Pharmacy, our third quarter sponsor for tonight's BCP Spotlight game on Midwest Sports Net. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. Because it's hot. Oh my goodness, it's hot. This is, for my money, the biggest matchup of the day. I'm going to have lots of fun today. Fourth quarter about to get underway here from Caddo, and now it's just, it really is, it's all Bruins tonight. Outscored the Comets 12-5 in that third quarter. And extended the lead to 32. Number 11 team in Class A making a bit of a statement tonight. Cotton shot no good. Rebound Lackey. Some of the starters back out on the court one last time here in the fourth quarter. Nesbitt for three. And rebound is Cotton. Opening there, shot a little too strong for Palisano. Rebound, put back, Cotton no good, gets another opportunity, and that one will go in Christian Cotton. Gets two. Neptune, down low, draws the contact, count the basket. He'll have the end one opportunity, and just backing low away, a row away, excuse me. Neptune now. It's a chance for an and one. Count it. Substitution now for the comments. Sam Lambeth comes in. And the lead is 33. Bennett again. And the jumper for Bennett has come up a little short most of the night. He's able to get over and slow down Nesbitt in the corner, though. Bruins reset. Nesbitt tries the Euro step. It works. Line shift now for the Brutes following... Nesbitt's basket. Haven Nesbitt with eight points. Don't forget, next BCP Spotlight game next week. Thompson steps in, gets the steal. Four on one. Thompson keeps it off the glass. The steal and the points. Austin Thompson with five points now on the night. Bennett tries the same thing. Result not the same. Lambeth under the basket. Can't get it to fall. And Thompson will come away. Rebound this time. Looking ahead. Finds Bearden. Count those two for Peyton Bearden, his first baskets tonight, basket tonight. Eighth Bruin to score. JT Tallies come back into the contest for the Bruins. About an hour bus ride home for the Comets tonight from Caddo. Be a long bus ride for both these teams. Tough night. Lady Bruins with the victory over Dixon earlier tonight, 76 53. 
Emily Robinson with 38 points, exactly half of her team's output. Thompson, pass ahead, shot falls for Jordan Holly. He's got two. Nice look. And this time, Holly's going to get the board. We'll see a substitution timeout here. Getting some more players into the game, nearing the midpoint here in the fourth quarter. Bruins in control. And the Comets will take the timeout as well. We'll keep it right here, and we will say, hey, listen, I want to say thanks to our sponsor, tonight's fourth quarter sponsor, K&D Customs. Kent Springer and his staff at K&D Customs. Now, they can take care of your car in so many ways, you know, custom tinting and more. And I have seen, I don't know if you've seen some of these K&D Customs cars in parades. I realize we haven't had a chance to watch a parade in who knows how long. It's going to come back in 2021. We're going to see parades again. I believe that. You watch the parade in Bryan County and Durant, and you watch a, a Veterans Day parade or a Christmas parade or a homecoming parade, and you see cars coming through with that K&D Customs logo. Those cars are nice. And they have all of the trappings. Kent Springer and his guys there at K&D Customs can get your car set up. Outside, inside, audio as well. You can stop by there on First Avenue. It's K&D Customs, by the way, Kent Springer, a big supporter of Caddo Athletics. Let's look at that Bruins lineup now as we talk about Caddo Athletics. Carson Colbert, Colbert back in the game. JT Talling, we mentioned him a little bit earlier. Joined by Caden Danderson, the sophomore, wearing number five. The sophomore, number 32, Connor Williams. And a sophomore, 35, Gavin McMichael. And this one will go back to the Comets. Now you look at this on paper. Stat line filled out pretty well. My... Most everyone for the Bruins. Danderson with the steal. Danderson ahead. Can't get the shot. Heads up play by Danderson to reach in there and get in that passing lane. They won't come away with two, but quality defense. Another substitution now as Danderson will take a seat and freshman Colton Spears checks in. You know, the stat lines, as I was mentioning, nobody's filled his up too high tonight. Hayslip with a strong 12 points. Dill with a strong 12 points tonight. But the teamwork has been very good for Cato. And they did, the Bruins did what they had to do tonight. Took care of business. Pushed it when they need to. Opened up a lead. Didn't let the Comets get back into it, really. Tally. Can't get the shot. That one redirected a little bit. Comets don't have numbers, but Apollo's going to stop. Jumper in the lane, too strong. Mayer will go to the line. Mark Mayer has six points tonight. And we'll see some Comet substitutions here in just a moment. Two free throws good for Mark Mayer. He has eight points tonight. Four for seven from the free throw line. Don't think anyone's going to write in their journals about tonight's free throws taken for either team. Nice baseline move, pushing the ball inside. Williams can't get the shot to fall. Comets keep it. Apollo alone outside the arc. And just puts that one up. 
Andy in. Mason Apollo with six points tonight. And I think he just felt like he had to shoot that when he was so open. Nobody was out there. Tie ball. So Danderson's going to check back in now, as will Peyton Bearden. Danderson, quick shot for three. That one's no good. Bruins with the rebound. Blocked underneath. McMichael keeps it, though. And he keeps the ball on the Caddo into the court. Two minutes remaining. McMichael, the cutter, allows defenders to go through. One dribbling off the glass. Nice look for Gavin McMichael, the sophomore. Becomes the 10th Caddo Bruin to put points on the board tonight. Bennett <laughs> off the leg of a Bruin, gets it back, and the shot's no good. Bennett has it taken away. Tally. It's going to stay with the Bruins. So again for Cato, all you Bruins fans, Next up on Friday night against Savannah on the 11th. This one chased down, and we have a backcourt violation. That one's right here in Bruin Fieldhouse, home of the Bruins, hosting Savannah. Then the Savannah tournament the next week, and then the semester break for Caddo. Lady Bruins have already moved 4-0 on the evening, number eight in the state. Caddo. He is 45 seconds away from moving to 4-0. Number 11 in the state in Class A. Looking forward to some more Bryan County games coming up. I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, including K&D Customs, our fourth quarter sponsor here. As well as Gallipot Pharmacy, Firehouse Subs. Pro image, too. Trying to keep our clock cam in check for a few more seconds. Nice move, top of the key, driving left side. Peyton Bearden has two more points. That's four tonight. Comets are going to run this one down. Bennett to the basket. Two more points for him. McMichael tried to take a little bit of a charge. Not likely to happen. Clock's going to wind down on this one, and it turns out to be a 37-point victory for Caddo tonight here at home. The Bruins move to 4-0 on the season. The Comets fall to 0-2 on the season. The long-distance high five from one bench to the next, and we are calling it quits here from Caddo tonight. Two wins for the Caddo program. Girls victorious 76-53. Boys win 65-28. And remember, this is a Bryan County Patriots spotlight game presented by Midwest Sports Net. I want to say thanks to Joseph McWilliams on camera tonight. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we will see you next week. Thanks to everyone for watching. God bless you, and have a great night.